Simple Storage Service from AWS is one of the most heavily used cloud storage products in the entire catalog. This means that it's very important that we understand how confidentiality can be managed and what sort of role S3 plays from a security perspective for our teams. As you move through the world of AWS products and services, you're going to find one continual theme, and that is S3 is your friend. He's there when you need some place to put some log files. It's there when you need to have a working directory. It's there as a way to exchange content between other organizations as well. It's there when you need it. It's there for your birthday. Okay, maybe S3 is not there for your birthday, but it is a critical service. And indeed, S3 takes a very central role in the life of many AWS products and services, especially once we get into looking at things like data analytics and log processing, where S3 becomes a central location for working with, storing, and even archiving many pieces of data as well. Many enterprise security teams have moved to using S3 as a data lake where they can leverage that limitless growth and storage potential that it represents. And if there's only one thing that's certain out there in the IT world, it's that our data requirements requirements are not going to start going down anytime soon. This means enterprise security teams are going to continue needing to grow and expand and consume more space, and that rate of growth is likely to increase as well. So understanding S3 and how to manage its assets is going to be critical to almost any organization that's leveraging AWS. Confidentiality can be addressed through robust logging practices, both in the API and in the data events as well. Access management options that give us a number of ways to create identities and authorize them to perform actions or interact with resources in our accounts. Not to mention many encryption options to ensure that once our data comes to rest, it stays intact and is only accessible by the appropriate parties. I remember when I was a little kid, my dad said, make sure that you always log all of the actions. Now, when I was six, it didn't make a whole lot of sense, but all these years later now, I finally understand what he meant. You know, we do need to log all of these different actions. And indeed, many of our compliance and security requirements will dictate a robust logging infrastructure for it. So one of the first services we talk about there for uh, confidentiality logging is CloudTrail, which is the AWS API logging service, and we have a couple other great nuggets about it already. CloudTrail's goal is to simply provide a forensic trail of interactions that have happened regarding creating or interacting with most of the AWS products and services. They also support a couple of unique data interactions uh, specific to S3 so that we can look at things like a specific object creation, uh, versioning, manipulations, other interactions with access control lists. And if we pair that up with S3 access logging, okay, which is an additional security visibility service from S3, um, you'll get access logging records that are extremely granular for just about every call that you get on a configured bucket. Now, specifically, Amazon does use the term best effort log delivery here, so there aren't any specific guarantees, but typically your events are going to be available in the logged buckets uh, that you requested within a few hours of the event occurring. This is why it's critical to see CloudTrail and S3 access logging as not uh, overlapping so much as they are complementary to one another. The CloudTrail records are going to be much more complete and intact than what you might see with access logging. So I always recommend making sure that your logging solution includes both the CloudTrail log streams and the S3 access logging details as well. In S3, the two key resources that we're concerned with is the bucket itself and then the objects themselves. Look at my collection of objects, a cornucopia of objects to choose from. So these objects could represent almost any type of data that you might want to upload. Archives, flat files, text, images, streaming content, media, exports out of tables, you name it, you got it. It is an object level storage service, which means that Amazon treats the object more as a unique key within a database rather than thinking of it like a file system. Now, confidentiality is largely protected through use of security policies, and those are going to be through the all-powerful identity and access management service with AWS. Cool thing here is it's a global service. This means that you can set up policies and identities to protect authentication and authorization of object access and operations on your bucket using the same structures and nomenclature and terminology all across the AWS ecosystem. So your IAM policy is available, and then you also have something called an access control list which you can write and designate as well. And we'll look at those in a separate nugget. The policies and access control lists play a key authorization role in deciding what actions and what specific resources individual identities are allowed to interact with. There are also a number of key ways to enrich this access management layer by using things like identity federation as well. Now, to help make sure that we can get these policies written correctly to protect our buckets and objects, I've included a couple of downloadable API reference guides here, which talk about how to reference a bucket, uh, what sort of security commands to watch out for, and of course, critical ones there are uh, dealing with policies and access control lists. We'd want to 
definitely restrict the ability to delete buckets or really put any changes on anything that we're storing log content in. So as you move through creating bucket policies and identity policies, hopefully these will help you out. And I've also included a reference for objects, again, including the resource name, security, read, and write update sorts of commands. Uh, for the object ones, critical, again, deleting objects, being able to update objects, manipulating any of the permission schemes through access control lists or through policy settings, all of critical import. We would want to make sure that we're focusing on either limiting these actions specifically in our policies or very carefully granting permissions to only select individuals to have these permissions. Always using a role instead of direct permissions whenever possible. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.